So let's all talk yeah. about uh, let's all talk about the Vietnam War, not the movie, the mm. actual event. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still making my way through it. It's good so far, and I'm still making my way through it. I, you know, where I watched last night. I, I finished I, the whole I, thing. I didn't finish it. I, I, I'll probably, I mean, realistically, I'll probably finish it by the end of the month. I mean, I was just watching one or two episodes a week. Um, I DVR'd the whole thing, but I stopped binge watching. I won't binge watch anything ever again. I just refuse to. I just don't have the time or the patience for it to be honest with you so I'm like I think I'm halfway through it and I like it so far uh, it's heavy stuff it's not something you can really binge watch um, it's really I don't I don't think it is but um, it, it's it's good it's very informative um, and it's a miracle we're still around as a country um, <laughs> that, yeah, no I don't it is. I mean, I mean, it, very, it is <laughs> that 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 really that conflict really almost destroyed us um, and maybe it has. Oh, we're still I mean, dealing with it. You yeah, know, I, we're still I, dealing I, with it. Yes. So, I mean, it's it's amazing that nothing in 40, 50 years has really changed. And maybe we're just, I think in the last, like, in this century, we really are coming. We're seeing the effects, I think, finally come home. Um, the, I mean, just last weekend, the divisions, there's still so many divisions. They might not be the same kinds of divisions, but there's still a lot, there's a lot of pain from that conflict that I don't think's ever going to go away. Um, and it, well, it's, it's, it, yeah, the way that the way that it drew a line between between people, you know, uh, between the people who could accept the war and even encourage right. it, and the people who the people who couldn't, uh, you know, it's uh, you know, there's still echoes of it, and uh, you know, as a as a work, you know the uh, the entire eighteen hours is is fantastic. Yeah, I completely mm-hmm. learned. Uh, you know, I learned everything that I wanted to know about the uh, war. The, the you know things things that I found confusing about the beginnings of it, uh, and uh, and just the you know the simple fact of the matter is that uh, we got into it by mistake. Really, you know, it was a it was a complete misreading. Of uh, what was really going on in Vietnam, mm-hmm. and and we 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 re- because we were in, in so obsessed with the Cold War and fighting the communists that uh, we we misread it as a as a communist threat. Right. And, uh, well, and, 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 and the risked. big story the big story too is that the escalation of it was a willful uh, misreading. Yeah. Uh, uh, on mm-hmm. the behalf of you know th- that's the real. Uh, Crime. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, when you're hearing the uh, when you're hearing the recordings of the president and Kissinger, uh, you know, President Nixon and Kissinger, mm-hmm. uh, particularly working behind the scenes to, uh, you know, not only in '68 to kind of uh, to uh, to uh, undermine the peace talks so that they could get elected, uh, but also uh, undermining, you know, any any further peace in '72. Uh, also, to get <laughs> Nixon reelected, you know, they they wanted they used the war to uh, to uh, to for personal gain. And uh, there's record the, when you hear those recordings of those those guys in the Oval Office making their plans. Uh, every one of gonna, them, every one yes. of them knew that it was a loser. And, right, uh, everybody. You know, Ken- Kennedy was the one that said it publicly. I mean, uh, you know, in the end, this is their war, and they're going to have to win or lose it. Um, but uh, you know, he—I um, know a lot of people find fault in its uh, depiction of Kennedy, because Kennedy uh, held the hope that uh, he would pull us all out in his second term, um, and by all accounts, that's what he was going to do. But you know, he was assassinated. He didn't get a chance to do that. So the the movie's mm-hmm. not going to tell you something that didn't happen. <laughs> right. So mm-hmm. I, I don't quite know what people want uh, from it, but um, I thought that uh, on on the whole, I mean, look, it's an astounding uh, achievement. Uh, God knows he has a wealth of footage. It was shocking to me how how he could find particular clips of interview mm-hmm. subjects on the on the field. 
Um, mm-hmm. You know, out of, out of so many hundreds of thousands of men, yeah, that he could yeah. single he could single out an interview subject, and he could find them on the field, and kind of follow yeah, them yeah. as they know what they're doing. Yeah, we could. Um, yeah, yeah. It was there were uh, yeah, it was, uh, that was great. I, was, I, I just a couple yeah. of quibbles, a couple of quibbles. Um, I don't think his use of music was as inventive or outside the box as I would have hoped it would have been. Yeah, uh, I'm not talking about Trent, Trent Reznor. I'm talking about the tunes of the day. Yeah, right. they were they were for the most part stereotypical, which is fine. I mean, those were the biggest hits of the time, I'm sure. Um, and there were some pieces of information and insights that were repeated. It's almost like he forgot he used that six hours ago, and it felt mm. like an editing over oversight. Um, there was one whole episode that felt uh, unnecessary to me because it didn't offer anything new, but it came in between the two best episodes for me, which were the Ted Offensive episode and the episode that ends with the Kent State. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah. Just harrowing. And there's a moment in the series, I think in the second episode, where they talk about uh, a veteran uh, named uh, uh, Mogi. The, the conclusion of that, where the mother talks about, you know, they, they gave her the option once he was killed in combat of burying him at home, but he want, she wanted him buried in Arlington just because if, if he was close to her, she would feel like, scratching the earth to try to feel the warmness of him again. And, oh, my God. I mean... Mm. Yeah. I mean, you know, what... what uh, You know, I I came away with the, from the work uh, with the notion that uh, will we ever see uh, wartime footage like that ever again? I mean, uh, we had certainly never seen it before uh, in terms of, you know, uh, World War II or, or even the Korean War. Uh, but TV wasn't as, uh, as uh, powerful a, a medium as it was in the 60s uh, when TV news would constantly, of course, send uh, correspondents out to Vietnam to film this, uh, film the atrocities there. And so, I mean, you know, the thing is, you know, the the re- revelation of all that uh, carnage on uh, the nightly news every every evening, uh, I think, is what really fueled the, uh, is obviously what fueled the opposition to it. And, uh, and so, uh, you know, I mean, it, that's, that's the good part of the press presence yeah. but um but you know i mean i i have to say i've i've never in one work uh even even in the in the realm of uh ken burns documentaries uh like the civil war and the world war Two one uh the um the amount of carnage that we see on screen is is staggering uh and um Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I don't uh, think we'll ever see. You know, we won't ever see that type of press coverage of a war probably ever again as a result of of you know the reaction to to this particular war. Um, well, and so, now and now they regulate. Uh, I mean, I don't know where we are now with it, but uh, you know, there's been there have been regu- presidents who have regulated not showing the caskets of our yeah. veterans when they come home from war. You know. Yeah, much much less, you know, the the bloody battlefields. So yeah, I, it, it's it's an extraordinary work, and and uh, I really feel like I know I I understand the war better that war better than I ever have before. Mm-hmm. So and uh, that's that's fantastic. So um, and it's point. also because because it gives you every perspective. I mean, it goes yeah, no, the, that's it the goes the, the, the South and the North Vietnamese, it goes to the anti-war protesters, the people in mm. government, the, the American veterans. I mm. mean, you hear voices from all sides, so you get as complete an understanding of the Vietnam War experience as has ever been made available in documentary mm. form. Right. Uh, and, uh, John, McC- John McCain requested to see it, but he only wanted to see the uh, the 
snippets of the documentary that the interviews with the North Vietnamese. He wanted to understand his, you know, quote unquote, enemy of the time, and right. then their experience. Uh, you know, and McCain is in it, and you just have tremendous empathy for. Um, I mean, McCain's not a new interview subject. He he just film footage of him being held captive is in right. It. Um, and you, I mean, you just have a, a tremendous uh, empathy for uh, all of the people that were that were captured, including McCain. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 